Here we'd like to determine the points of intersection between these two equations. In other words, we're trying to solve a nonlinear system of equations because, uh, well, we can see it's nonlinear because we have squared terms. So we have x squared minus 9y plus 13 is equal to 0. We'll call that equation number 1. And we have x squared plus y squared minus 6y minus 19 is equal to 0. We'll call that equation 2. What kind of equations are they? Well, the first equation is a parabola. And we know it's a parabola because there's an x squared term in it, but there is no y squared term. It is x, one x squared and a linear y term. And the problem is, is that, uh, well, we know it opens up or down. Um, we don't know which way it opens, uh, but we do know that it opens up or down. And the second equation is x squared plus y squared minus 6y minus 19 is equal to 0. We know that that is a circle. And the reason why we know that it is a circle is because of the presence of the x squared and the y squared term. And they both have co same coefficients, and so it's a perfect circle. We just don't know where the center of that circle is, and we don't know what the radius of that circle is either. We could certainly determine the center and the radius by putting it into the standard form, just as we could do with that parabola. So do they intersect? Do they not intersect? I don't know. Uh, but let's pretend that they do intersect somehow. I, I, I'm not quite sure how they will intersect. Well, if you get graphing software, you can certainly plot them and then gauge or get a rough estimate for their points of intersection. But at, uh, they certainly might intersect at two places, or they might only intersect at one place if the one was tangent to the other, or they might not intersect at all if they were totally removed from uh, the vicinity of each other's location. So what we'll do is we'll take these equations and see uh, how we can manipulate them. So we've got equation 1 and equation 2. And so from equation 1, we can certainly solve for one of the variables. In particular, let's solve for x squared. So we'll solve for x squared, and we end up with x squared is equal to 9y minus 13. And that's uh, pretty good because what I'm going to do with that information now is that I'm going to substitute that into equation number 2 wherever I see an x squared term. Because I only see one x squared term in equation 2, I will only have to substitute once. So from equation 2 now, I'm going to rewrite it as 9y minus 13, because that's what x squared is, plus uh, y squared minus 6y minus 19 is equal to 0. And this now gives me an equation with only one variable. So let's now tidy it up and collect like terms and organize it in a fashion that we can understand. So we're going to have y squared. And we have, uh, again, we have 9y and we have uh, minus 6y. So it's going to be minus 3y, or plus 3y. And we have minus 13 minus 19, which is minus 32. And that's equal to 0. And you recognize that as a quadratic equation. So you can solve a quadratic equation by using the quadratic formula to get the two solutions. There are always going to be two solutions for a quadratic equation. Uh, I'm going to use the built-in functions on my calculator. And the built-in functions on the calculator demand that I enter in a value for a, b, and c coefficients. And in this case, the a coefficient is 1, the b coefficient is 3, and the c coefficient is equal to negative 32. Of course, you can also use the quadratic formula to solve for y. Uh, the calculator is going to give me two roots or two solutions for y, and those two roots are y is equal to 4.35, and the other root is that y is equal to negative 7.35. And so now that I have two solutions for the y value, I can easily determine from that y value the corresponding x value. And how am I going to get the x value? Well, I'm going to substitute back into the um, first equation, so from equation 1. So from equation 1, we have uh, x squared is equal to 9 times y, 9 times 4 times 0.35, subtract 13. And so x squared is going to equal to um, some number, subtract 13, or 26.5. 26.15, and so that gives me two solutions when I take the square root 
x is going to equal to plus or minus the uh, square root of 26.15, which is plus or minus 5.11. What happens when we substitute uh, y is equal to negative 7.35 into the equation? Well, when you substitute x is equal to negative 7.35, we end up with, let's see if we can move to a fresh page, we've got at y is equal to negative 7.35 and the fact that we know that y x squared is equal to 9y minus 13 and we substitute we end up with x squared is equal to 9 times negative 7.35 subtract 13 this is going to give us a uh, an equation that says x squared is equal to negative 79.15. What does that tell us? That tells us that the there is no real solution here. In other words, they are complex solutions. They involve the square root of a negative quantity. So we're going to go back to our two values for x, where x is equal to plus or minus uh, 5.11 when uh, y was equal to 4.35. And so we have two points of intersection. The two points of intersection occur at the point 5.11 comma 4.35 for x and the other point of intersection is at negative 5.11 comma 4.35. And if you use graphing software to graph the parabola and the circle, you will see that these two points of intersection uh, satisfy both of the equations.